Shroud moves to Mixer, and more coming up on today's episode of The Lace and Tech News. Hey Gadget here, you're just in time for the latest episode of the world's only 3-in-1 show on tech, gadgets, and gaming news. That's right, this is The Lace and Tech News. My name is Taylor American. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button right now so that you don't miss out on the latest episode. And uh, if you've been a long-time listener, or short-term listener, I don't know, listener of the show, as it were, uh, feel free to share this episode with a friend. It's the only way that uh, kind of word gets around around these parts. Uh, speaking of word getting around, <laughs> apparently Shroud heard that he could get a better payout at Mixer and moved over to Mixer exclusively. Said bye-bye, Twitch. So we'll be taking a look at that today. We'll also be taking a look at PS5 games might have a killer feature that only Sony could pull off and uh that amongst the um i guess complaints that are coming in of people who apparently don't like the new design of the ps5 if it's actually rumored to be the look but we'll find out and finally we'll be taking a look at the last of us 2 release has been officially delayed until may of 2020 so before i get into that don't worry we won't be having a uh today in tech history segment um Mainly because I'm feeling a little bit more certain now that I've heard some feedback from you guys in terms of how would you how you'd like to hear this show and the content moving forward for the time being. Uh, as I had mentioned on a previous episode, I'm thinking of doing a weekly show for the time being because I have other projects going on and I don't want to suffer uh, any of the quality um, of the show. I want to be able to provide you guys with some articles. And, uh, you know, get you pumped up and excited about what's going on the latest. And uh, I guess move on with the rest of your day and, and whatever else you might have going on. And, and that uh, I can deliver on it without having to worry about whether the quality is suffering or, or uh, if I'm wearing you guys out because of all the content. I know, doing this daily. So moving forward, we'll most likely be doing weekly shows. And it will most likely be recorded and released every Thursday, so if you tune in on Fridays, uh, it's still fresh for the most part, um, but we'll, we'll be doing a larger recap of the latest news going on. Um, we might actually have a little bit more segments in terms of articles, and uh, we might have more articles covering more of the weekly news cycle as opposed to what goes on on a day-to-day -day basis, but do let me know. I'm always interested in your feedback comments feedback tweets are always welcome so with that being said let's head on over to today's feature article now if you're interested in the video for today's show you can always head on over to youtube.com forward slash tech news gadget for those of you who want to watch video now i understand most of you like to listen to the audio and the podcast while you're on the go in the uh app of your choice and uh Feel free to do so as well, but for those of you who want to watch video, well, we got my whole reaction. We have the, the images that uh, happen to go along with it. Apparently, Microsoft just sniped another streamer from Twitch as Shroud moves to Mixer, and uh, it looks like Ninja and Shroud are high-fiving each other. Ha people are half-speculating. Does this mean Dr. Disrespect is moving over next? I don't know. There seems to be a lackadaisical policy enforcement policy. Uh, in place at Twitch, so many streamers are left wondering why should I even do this if my brand's seriously just contained to one platform and it's outgrown that platform? Should I really find another platform to set up shop? One would think yes. First it was Ninja, now it's Shroud, as Microsoft has inked a deal that will have yet another one of Twitch's most popular streamers switch exclusively to Mixer. Oh, not to mention that uh, usually the deals um, for moving over to Mixer, in, in terms of partnership and everything else, are a lot more juicier forthwith coming from Microsoft, because it's almost like they know how to treat gamers and viewers and give both what they want. Hmm... Well, I know, now I know what you're saying, now I know what you're saying, but seriously, can you compete with almost zero latency, Twitch? What was that? Oh, it took five seconds to get back to me. 
<laughs> See, that's the problem. See? It's almost like Mixer figured something out. Near real time video. Like, you could leave a comment on somebody's Mixer stream while they're live. They will see it immediately and they can respond immediately, real time. There's no delay. But anyways, while the details have not been announced, Microsoft is surely forking over a significant amount of cash, cash as Shroud, who's best known for playing first-person shooters including Counter-Strike, Go, Apex Legends, and PUBG, has become Twitch's second most popular streamer since Ninja's departure with more than 7 million total followers. Hmm... Seems to be an interesting strategy here Here coming out from Mixer. You're just going to start sniping top players off of, or streamers off of Twitch and just pulling them over here and, and, and boosting the base that way? We don't know. We'll see how it pans out. But uh, yeah, here's a tweet officially from Mixer. Look at this. Oh, it's glorious. Oh, did he do the same thing? Hmm. However, while Shroud's move will clearly have an impact on his many fans, the bigger potential takeaway is that Microsoft's latest talent acquisition could be a sign that it thinks Mixer is finally ready to take on Twitch for control of the video game streaming market. Currently, according to Stream Element's latest Q3 report, Twitch dominates the streaming scene as it owns 75.6% of the market, followed by YouTube at 176 with Facebook and Mixer essentially tied for third at 37 and 3.2% respectively. However, and this is where the numbers get interesting. This is why I wanted to do an article on it and, and a show. Despite Ninja switching to Mixer in August, Mixer's popularity has not all changed that much. That's because despite the number of unique channels on Mixer doubling from 1.96 million to 3.92 million in Q3, Mixer also saw the number of live stream hours watched fall by around 10% in Q3, as compared to a 3% rise for Twitch for the same time period. However, with Microsoft set to release a new console next year, which will most certainly have support for live streaming gameplay to Mixer baked in both not only streaming but viewing capabilities, it seems like Microsoft is prepping for a big campaign against Twitch that could peak during the 2020 holiday season. Now, um, well, I don't know. Does that mean Microsoft's going to start poaching more streamers between now and next fall? We'll find out, but there are some very clear defining features as to why you would actually want to um, be on Mixer in terms of streaming. I don't know, that's kind of where I've settled into and uh, and, and stream occasionally. I, the show originally did start out as a stream on Mixer, and um, while I'm in the process of trying to get that back up soon, no details on that just yet, um, it is a plan I have in mind. I mean, I, uh, Mixer feels right now what Twitch felt like in the beginning. So I'm going to say on that, um, I don't know, it, it's, it just has it. I, I can't really explain it, but it has it. And uh, that's what I'm really looking forward to on Mixer. Interestingly enough, um, I'm kind of excited to see Shroud hop on over. Um, you see, the closest mirror to the streamers in terms of who's on Mixer currently that I could see possibly, I don't know, friendly competition would be Arconaut. Arconaut, however, mm, holds an edge over streamers on Mixer in a way that no other streamer can really match him. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to go watch Mixer.com slash Arconaut. Uh, he's... <sighs> I don't know how the guy does it. Dude's nuts. Um... He, he mainly likes playing, you know, Call of Duty, Apex Legends. He, he can play Fortnite decently well enough. He's very FPS, shooter-style, action-type uh, guy. He definitely can nail his shots. Uh, but he likes to play, like, the more grittier versions, like the, the Apex Legends and the Call of Duties and the Battlefield-type games. So Shroud hopping over might give him some friendly competition, might have him step up his game. I don't know. I'd actually be uh, pleasantly surprised to see those two in the same room. Uh co-streaming and uh i don't know having a great old time that's as far as i'm thinking it could go um uh, outside of that yeah let me know your comments down in the comment section via youtube or uh if you are on twitter we are at tech news gadget all right so moving on to our next article but before we do for those of you interested you can always head on over to technewsgadget.net for 
all of the articles that we mentioned in today's show. Yes, we uh, while we do display them here and talk about them on uh, the podcast, well, some of you actually like to read articles for yourself, so I like to have those links available. Like I said, technewsgadget.net. Now, PS5 games might have a killer feature that only Sony could pull off. And I know what you're you're looking at it right now going, Ugh, why does that layout look so bad? Oh, I hate that design. I hope that's not the official PS5 design. You know what? Who cares? They're designing it the best way possible. There's a reason for the designs outside of players going, Ugh, it looks gross. Remember when you used to complain about computer towers and how gross and disgusting they look like? Well, what Alienware do? Exactly. So, one of the many, many fascinating decisions that director Hideo Kojima made for his PS4 exclusive open world action adventure game, Death Stranding, most of which people still have no idea about, was to build a soundtrack curated from actual bands that populate our world and include those songs in the game itself. As you travel across the game's treacherous landscape, you'll hear songs from Bring Me the Horizon, Churches, and other artists that have signed up with Sony's music group, Interestingly enough, and according to Rolling Stone, this is just the beginning. On November 7th, Sony will release a standalone soundtrack called Death Stranding Timefall on RCA Records. The soundtrack will include original recordings from a multitude of high-profile artists and Sony insiders telling Rolling Stone that the project is seen as an important benchmark of increased creative collaboration between PlayStation and Sony Music Group ahead of the launch of the PlayStation 5 console in 2020. Now, the implication here seems to be that we will see more licensed music in so Sony's first-party games throughout the next console generation. After all, since Sony has access to such a deep roster of individual artists, why not take advantage of that and bring even more credibility and interest to its titles by allowing the, the two divisions to link up and share songs? This news comes days after a slightly sketchier leak in which an anonymous source suggested that, while well, we don't want to listen to people talking, that the PS5 will launch on December 4th for eh, around 500 bucks. So far, Sony has only confirmed that the PS5 will launch next holiday, but has yet to offer any specific release details or specs or, 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 or features. Um, but if you've been a listener of this show for any length of time, you know we've kind of gone over most of the rumors already and speculations so we kind of know what's coming for the ps5 for the most part in, in terms of layout as well and how it's going to look but what do you think let me know down in the comments section I don't know, this, this is an interesting feature i mean sony's sitting here thinking what is one way that we can actually you know we have a sony mo music group why don't we just license the songs from them pull them over and then they send stuff isn't that great win-win I mean, Sony, you're big, you're multi-national corporation, faceted division. You're not just one company. Uh, you got a lot you can pull from, um, a, a lot more than Microsoft can, to, to some extent. You're still sitting here and suffering on how to figure out how to stream near zero latency. But then again, the PS5, I don't think is going to be designed for console streaming anyways. It might, but we'll find out. We might, but I'll have to wait and see. As for the Nintendo Switch, I don't know. It's a really funny game. I can play with Joy-Cons, and that's Nintendo. So, no, don't worry. It's just, just thoughts, speculations, thinking about how how each company is trying to maybe carve out its own niche with its own unique feature set. I don't know. It's quite interesting if you think about it. Moving on. All right, so for those of you who are <laughs> all excited about The Last of Us Part 2, well, bad news, uh, it's been delayed until May. Um, at long last, we finally have some more news. Sony has recently set a release date for The Last of Us Part 2, and there is much rejoicing throughout the land. That date will not stick, however, as the anticipated follow-up from Naughty Dog has been pushed until spring of 2020, May, Sony and Naughty Dog announced in a letter to fans from game director Neil Druckmann, a news release date of, well, a new release date of May 29th, 2020, was confirmed for The Last of Us Part 2. The news is unexpected, after all. 
a long-awaited game release announcement came less than a month ago, and it, and it pegged the game coming to PS4 around February 21st, 2020. Um, so what's with the three-month delay? Well, <clears throat> here we got the details. He acknowledged it, and he said, I know. It was just about a month ago when we had our full big blowout of the game and release date, letting media play over two hours of it, along with debuting our new story trailer and revealing the release date. The positive response we saw from our community was overwhelming. You can feel the energy among the team members. After working on something for so many years, it's invigorating to get a glimpse of validation for all the hard work. However, it was during the last few weeks, as we were closing out sections of the game, that we realized, well, we simply didn't have enough time to bring the entire game up to a level of polish that would call it Naughty Dog quality. Apparently, they have quality control there. At this point, we were faced with two options. Compromise parts of the game and get a lower score from Angry Joe uh, on the Angry Joe show. Uh, sorry, that wasn't comments. Or get more time. <laughs> we went the latter, and this new release date allows us to finish everything to our level of satisfaction while also reducing stress on the team. Now, while we're relieved that we won't have to compromise our vision, we're disappointed that we couldn't, you know, reach our end date. Uh, we wish we could have foreseen the amount of polish we needed, but the size and scope of this game got the better of us. We hate disappointing our fans, and for that we're sorry. We hope you understand that this additional time will ensure that it lives up to our collective ambition, as well as our commitment of the highest level of quality. So, even though it's a couple months delay, it will be worth it in the end, and it's really all you can do. I mean, why release a half-partially finished, half-baked, half-attempted video game when you can give it a month or two or three and actually finish it properly the correct way here's looking at you all the games who got really bad scores because you released and it was oh, shouldn't have been released it should have actually been fixed properly um there's one game i have in mind right now you can fly around on a jet pack you kind of look like iron man the game was super exciting in the trailers people are all excited about it and when it dropped it imploded itself so uh, the case could be made here for reminders to game studio companies. Finish your game to the best of your ability or don't bother releasing it at all. And if you're a customer and, and you're expected and you're looking forward to the game, just be patient. If they have a delay, it's for a good reason. Just wait. It, you're not going to die. It, <laughs> Well, I mean, that's worst case scenario. Everybody is. Um, sorry, welcome to reality. Um, but, you know, you can you can give it a couple months or two just to make sure everything is polished and finished up and, and, and to the high quality so that when you play it, you can actually say, yes, this is the good game. And this is what I was expecting. Rather than go, it could have been better. And why did I do on it right now? Ugh. It's almost like running into a candy store all half excited because you wanted to... Um, buy a candy bar and you bought the candy bar and then you leave the candy bar out on the sidewalk for like a day or two and then you eat it and you go oh it's not that good oh i didn't really like it oh uh, and then you're whining it's like well yeah you're the who cares well why did you leave it laying around on the ground anyways i think you get my point but yep that's the that's the um information on the last of us part two i don't mind I don't mind if I have to wait. Uh, same same thing with um, Undying Light 2. If it takes a little bit longer to get that game out, it's fine with me. Um, if if you do it right, I will be happy. If you don't, I'll be slightly disappointed. I mean, I'll enjoy the game, but it's, I'm always going to have that inkling in the back of my mind of it could have been better. So, yep, I think that wraps it up. All right, and with that, that wraps up this episode of the Lace and Tech News. Thanks for tuning in, guys. New episodes starting next week and being released on Thursday. The Lace and Tech News can be found, well, at least for the time being. For those of you wondering, this show can be found on Apple, Spotify, Google, YouTube, Stitcher, Overcast, and more. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, let us know by clicking that like button and by leaving a comment if you're watching via YouTube. If you're listening via the podcast, hey, Head on over and leave us a quick review out on iTunes if you could. That'd be great. Also, double check that you're subscribed so that you don't miss the next episode. I'm your host, Taylor Merrick. And remember, for lace and tech, gadgets, and gaming news, visit technewsgadget.net. Pretty much keep being awesome, guys, and I'll see you on the flip side. I bet they have no idea it's a from the office.